I'm expecting that I will have one O seven with me, and I'm going to do an abracadabra. And let's see on my hand signals. When I get to seven, I think one O seven will be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Juan, are you there? I am, Field. How are you doing? I'm good. Over to you. Excellent. Uh, you know, this is a really interesting day. These people that we've been fighting all along, they, uh, they love their calendar dates, their number games, their star alignments, everything else. Uh, they're a pretty tough crowd <laughs> to deal with. And, uh, you know, they're, they're constantly imposing their imagery on us and uh, casting their spells. They think they're all wizards and magicians and everything else. So I thought we'd take a minute today, Field, and just kind of uh, draw a line in the sand and uh, uh, double draw it <laughs> because they made this fight. They, they put this here, these wizards and magicians of Wall Street, these wizards and magicians of D.C. and the money cities and uh, politics. <laughs> Hang on just a minute. All right. Go ahead. I had a Skype call come in, so we'll delete that. Go ahead. Um, so the, the key thing is that today is the summer solstice. Now, in D.C., just a few minutes ago, an interesting thing happened at 11... 54 DC time AM, which is an interesting number all by itself. 1154. That's a 911. Did you know that field? 11 and then 5 and 4, 9. It's a reverse 911. <laughs> okay, I, I, I got it. That, that was high noon in Washington, DC. And you know, uh, the Skull and Bones crowd, they have a, a big joke that. The skull and Bones time is five minutes ahead of everybody else. So five minutes before noon is the time that they go by. Well, I'm just telling you, Field, high noon in D.C. happened just now at 11.54 a.m. The whole history of our country, prior even to the Declaration of uh, Freedom, Independence, there was this battle going on. The people that came here to begin with, they came here to get away from these bloodline families that believe that they have the right to rule just because uh, who their mom and dad were. This right of blood. These Keynesian families, these Cain families who believe that they're more than human and so the rest of us are just here to uh, be their servants and slaves. The people that founded this country, the people that came here and built out this country to begin with, prior even to the signing of the Declaration of Independence, those people wanted to escape and have their own land, determine their own way of conducting their life, have their own religious freedom, and not be subject to somebody else's dictates on every aspect of their life and where they had to live and what they had to plan, who they had to be beholden to. The problem is that those European rulers, they couldn't uh, let good enough alone. They couldn't let us just uh, come here and be our own people. They had to try and, and extend their rule out across the Atlantic and try to dominate us even over here. And they sent their red coats over and made their rules and tried to reign over our cities and our local leaders and uh, tell them what they're going to do and how they're going to serve the king. At some certain point, the people had had enough. They had a, a Boston Tea Party. It started right there in Boston. And they went out through the tea and the ocean. Said, they're not paying your taxes. Well, they don't want your tea. And if you're, not, if you're going to run these prices to outer space, we're not going to play with it. We'll do our own stuff. <laughs> Crown didn't like that. Well, when they're coming to just uh, put their impose their taxes, when we don't get any representation, we don't get any say in how they're spent. The taxes go for their games, their wars, their mischief. 
and we're stuck with uh, just paying the bill. We don't like that. We don't want that. We're not going to go along with that. We're not going to be your slaves anymore. That's what that early generation of Americans said. You know, we think about what defines an American. What is America? It's an attitude. America is not a place on a map solely. It's an idea. It's an ideal. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of conducting your own life, living according to principles uh, under God and within the community, um, you know, within laws to be able to function together for your own purposes, for your own end, not under some king's rule for their gain to do their wars their way. We came here, established this country. We want to elect our own leaders from our own families, from our own communities to help us in determining our own destiny. And what's been going on for a long, long time is that these hidden manipulators, these hidden rulers, wannabe rulers of our life have been fooling us. They've been sifting in their people, people that would do stuff that they wanted done to control us, sifting in infiltrators to try and manipulate us into doing their will, their way, their timing over and over and over. Back when this country was founded, the people, when they finally had enough, they began to work with leaders and pamphlets went out through the community. People read and understood what was the makings for a nation. They argued and discussed back and forth what made a difference. Every American, all the people in these cities were very intellectual, very knowledgeable of what was lawful, what was ordained by God, what was lawful in a Christian community, a Christ-centered community, a godly community. And uh, uh, they came to some level of agreement. When those men gathered to sign the Declaration of Independence, to work out the final details, that was a culmination of decades, years, months, hours of conversations, back and forth, discuss, discussions and discord, eventually arriving at that sacred document that we have built a whole country around those concepts. When they signed that on July 4th, 1776, they drew a line in the sand and they said, we will not be your slaves anymore. We will not serve foreign masters. We will not have people ruling and reigning over us just because of some blood right, not happening. We will elect leaders who fit our ideals, who will follow our principles, who will do the things that we as a community collectively have agreed on. And we're not going to let somebody rule over us just because they have a fit of fancy or they have a war blood feud with some relative in a neighboring country. We aren't going to be your mercenaries. And we're not going to let our substance, our life, our kids' lives, be fodder for your cannons. The people that founded this country, that signed that document, and the people that they represented were very clear in that moment, in that day, about where they were at. There was a summer solstice in the weeks before the signing of that document in 1776, when the men gathered and they discussed all these things, they were in the bars and taverns because that was a social gathering place in those days. They were in the churches and the pastors were speaking on these subjects about freedom and slavery and a biblical history with Egypt and the people of God where God told his 
servant, go get my kids, get them out of slavery, and take them to a new land and show them how to live. We're right now at another hinge point, just like that time and that moment, that era at the beginning of the country was a hinge point in history. We're back at a hinge point like that right now. The reality is this dossier that was constructed to try and affect the outcome of an election, to try and steer who would be our leaders, who would direct us, and on what principles they would direct us as a country. That dossier and the players around it constructed their scheme on foreign soil. Right back there in England, the players from the FBI, the players from the CIA, the players from other intelligence agencies around the world came and went from London while they were conspiring against the American people in order to get leadership in place here in America that suited their goals, their ambitions, who they are, not us. That's what this battle is all about right now. People that are paying attention get it. But a lot of our neighbors haven't quite figured this out yet. And the reason they haven't figured it out is because they're still asleep. They've been listening to the mainstream news. They haven't understood that these players that are manipulating us, they're manipulating us on so many levels. It's hard for them to even you know, get their mind around. But think about this field. This didn't just start, you know, a few years ago. It didn't start a president or two ago. They had these plans and aspirations for us before we even had leaders that signed that document. And when our leaders did sign that document, when they came together and drew a line in the sand and said, slaves no more, that moment in time, is being repeated right now because they're still trying to bring us back under their rule. Over the years, we had the War of 1812. After we, you know, a decade or more of, of fighting here uh, after signing in 1776, remember the war didn't really start in earnest till after it was signed. For us right now, the war really isn't going to start probably till July 5th of this year, symbolically, because it didn't start until July 5th of 1776. They signed the document. That was the final thing. They all put their brand on it, said we either hang together or we hang separately. And July 5th, the word went out. That was the first full day. It was only a matter of time before lead was exchanged. Today, right now, we're really back at that same type of a thing. These revelations that are coming out this second, uh, these weeks, these days, leading up to uh, uh, our July 4th celebration, where we reassert our independence, our sovereignty as individuals and as a nation from foreign rule, foreign mischief, foreign taxes paying their uh, proposed bullshit energy stuff for saving the planet from their schemes. Uh, we're getting ready to have to go back and re-explain to them in detail that they're not going to rule us from afar. And they're not going to rule us by deception. You see, Field, over all these years, every time you turn around, they've tried to put by deception mechanisms in play that then caused us to have to fight a war with them, fight a war for them. And what's their plan? They're not even happy with just ruling Europe or just ruling America. They want to rule the whole planet. These foreign masters, these hidden hand families. Think about it, Field. You had Pike, 
a lot of people are Masons. Many of them possibly even in uh, this audience or they're hearing what I'm having to say. And I'm asking them to think again. This is a person who in morals and dogma is very, very clear. They serve Satan. If you think that just because your Masonic meetings are held in a church that the people are all really nice people, good people, well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And the devil himself enjoys that you are deceived. But the reality is the foundation and the purpose as you go up through the ranks of those hidden organizations is a new world order, but not founded on the principles of God in heaven, but of their God, Satan. People are sun worshippers. That's why they're so excited, Field, about having a summer solstice celebration, about orchestrating it, because the sun's rising on all their schemes and machinations. They're coming into a new day. They're celebrating the light. They're having all their rainbow celebrations. I'm here to tell you, Field, that's turning around right, right now. This isn't about their sunrise. And they're rising over us to dictate over us. This is about their sunset. This is about the sun setting and all their schemes and machinations to take over our country, to rule us by deception with leaders internally that are bought and paid for to do their bidding against us, the American people. That's what this moment is all about. That's what this election of President Trump was all about, and this coming election is going to be about in spades. We have a moment right now where revelations are going to be coming as fast as, as you know you can believe. I mean, it's just going to be astonishing how quickly new revelations are going to keep coming out about the the people and, and what they were doing against us behind the scenes. That's going to continue all the remainder of this year. The sun is setting on these manipulators, and we are about to enter another American revolution. Darkness to light. We've seen it, we know it, and now the sun's going to begin to set on them. A lot of people think that these issues have to do with left and right. They don't have to do with left and right. They have to do with right and wrong. Are we going to heaven? Are we going to hell? Are we following people who have a heavenly course? Or are we following people that have a hellish course? These people create our heroes. They create our stars. They create the media and the fake news. Imagine, think of all the people out there that we're supposed to idolize as being really good guys and, and really important good people and, and our leaders. You know, I'll use one that uh, comes to mind right off the top of my head. George Bush Sr. Here's a guy who's supposed to be the youngest naval pilot, uh, aviator, and he's, you know, just a whiz-bang kid. And then, uh, you know, he survives getting shot down. We've looked at the pictures. That aircraft that supposedly came in and had issues where it got shot from behind, that prop was shot on the ground. That was a fake hit. Never happened. It was a manufactured hero. All the mischief around that, it's, it's John Kerry. Look at what happened with him. He gets three Purple Hearts in Vietnam. The last one, the injury was so minor, the guy was like, do you really want a Band-Aid for this? This is a scratcher. He's even hardly blood coming out of it. You want a Band-Aid for this? You want a Purple Heart for this? Are you kidding? We got kids in body bags, and you want a Purple Heart for this bullshit? Questionable if the event even happened. They manufacture these heroes. Look at the fake stars we get out of Hollywood. Look at Katy Perry. Katy Perry gets to be brought into the White House. The puppet of a president brings her into the White House. They change the colors in the dining room to red. Who is she? One of the Disney uh, uh, mind-controlled kids? 
And what's what she say? She goes on national TV and talks about how human flesh is more nutritious than any other kind of food. And oh, by the way, yes, she couldn't get fame singing as a Christian singer. So she made a deal with the devil so that she could have fame. Really? That's somebody we invite to the White House to sing in our national house? And we turn the lamps to blood red and allow her to sing there? No wonder millennia wouldn't go into the White House until it was cleansed. No wonder President Trump says that Satan has been evicted from the White House. People don't understand this moment in time field is right and wrong, heaven and hell. Those people that don't choose right, if they just stand on the sidelines to watch, are going to slip right into Gomorrah, into hell itself. You have to make a choice. When those men put pen to paper on July 4th and signed their names to that declaration, that line in sand, we will not be your slaves, King George. We're our own nation. We're adults. And we're not putting up with it anymore. They signed a death warrant. It was full on. It was all out war. That's where we're at right now. Those same people are still trying to run our lives as a nation. That's what this moment is all about. And if you don't see that, you're not paying attention. Those conspirators that are about to be picked up and charged with crimes against our nation, treasonous crimes against our nation because of their treasonous activities. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Comey, those people conspired with foreign governments and players in foreign governments. Some of them are Benedict Arnold's, Mr. Halper, who was a spy in the Reagan administration, tried to become a spy in the president's administration right now with President Trump, tried to be a spy in the campaign, tried to engineer to get people rolled over to become spies for him with Papadopoulos and others, misfit and all of his friends. Are you kidding me? This is about right and wrong. This is about a heavenly course or a hellish course. These people that they're putting out in front of us, if we went the way that these Democrats want to go right now, what would we have? We'd have, oh, pedophilia is a lifestyle. It's a life choice. Really? We're supposed to accept that? Pedophilia is a life choice? Give me a break. If you don't think that this is right and wrong, you're not paying attention. It's not left and right. It's right and wrong. And those people that they're putting up there to be our leaders, you know, fairly recently, what was Bill Clinton? Okay, Bill Clinton, first of all, he got a Fulbright scholarship. So what's a Fulbright, uh, what's Fulbright say? Fulbright himself said, and he was a senator from Arkansas, by the way, on the payroll inside the families. Fulbright said that uh, the Constitution was an outdated document, that it caused a problem, made it so the president couldn't uh, uh, function properly, it handcuffed him. Okay, so Fulbright thought the Constitution was an outdated document, and Bill Clinton gets a Fulbright scholarship, believes that crap, then where does he go? He then he gets a Rhodes scholarship. Well, what's the Rhodes scholarship all about? Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes believed that the United States had gone astray and needed to be brought back under the Queen's rule. Needed to be brought back under England's rule, the Crown's rule. And so we needed to be, you know, herded back in and brought into the, the nations under the authority of the British Crown. Are you kidding me? Bill Clinton, that qualified 
qualifies him to be president of the United States. It qualifies him to not be president of the United States. Why? Why are we getting these people put in office? Who's doing it behind the scenes? Who's promoting them? If you go back and you look at what Pike said in Morals and Dogma, what was he saying? He said it was going to take three world wars in order for them to realize their great work. And what was the great work that they wanted to do, Field? The great work they wanted to do was to create a planet under the authority of their sun god, Satan. They wanted our whole planet subjugated to their type of rule with their god. He was the head of the Masons. He was the guy that's trying to say, you know, anybody that doesn't think that uh, Satan, Lucifer, is the head of Freemasonry doesn't uh, doesn't understand. So you go up through all the ranks and it's about good and we're helping our children and we do all these wonderful things. What's the checkerboard all about? Black and white. We do good works and we do bad works, but we balance it out. And we meet in churches. Bullshit. They're doing the works of darkness. They're doing the works of Satan. If you're part of those organizations, you need to think again about what you're actually involved in and whether or not you're just a useful tool in Satan's plan, Satan's designs. The reality is he, Pike, laid out this game plan and what's been happening in the world ever since. We've been getting this continual march towards some kind of a cataclysmic, grand, seismic event that after which all the people of the world come under their, their subjugation because they all the governments are wiped out and they have a new government that's in charge of everything. That's not what we want. That's not what's right. And how much blood along that path to get there. Anybody that doesn't think that they've been successful in, in pulling this off as far as paying attention. The Illuminati, they're real. May 1st, 1776, they established uh, their organization also. Just two months before we established ours as uh, the United States, declared our independence. So these Illuminatus were hard, hard at it. They were a little bit ahead of us in getting their organization going, and they infiltrated. They had people that agreed with and understood. And then a lot of our founding fathers, yes, they were in these organizations themselves. And over the course of time, through the Revolutionary War with England, and in the years after, many of them disavowed themselves of those relationships with the Masons. And these organizations, these secret handshake clubs, not just the Masons, but the Illuminati themselves. Why? Because they came to understand that they weren't actually working in the best interests of America, that they did have other plans and ideals that were against the ideals of the American citizen and our independence in our own way of life. They repented of it. This is that moment when we need people to think again about what are you actually involved in? Who are you actually associated with? What are your ties? And choose good over evil. That's what this is all about, Field. And in this time, in this moment, we have this pause moment the solstice moment, I say field, it's high noon in America right now. Joe Biden came out the other day and he said that uh, Democrats need to figure out how to work with Republicans. But if they can't, if they can't come up with a way to work with Republicans, well, it's going to get physical. And then what's he do? He makes a gesture imitating that he's holding an assault weapon. Look at the picture. Tell me I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. Hello? Joe Biden and an assault weapon. Hello? And what's the context? They're coming after Republicans. Really? If I did that, if you did that field, if anybody in this audience did that, oh my gosh, the outrage. Oh, the drama, the storm. Bullshit. They're the ones that are bringing this to a head. They're the ones that are bragging about flesh eaters in the White House. They're the ones that want Satan ruling over our country and putting all their monuments to ISIS and to 
Osiris and all of these rituals and the owl and all of those secret handshake clubs all over DC. They're the ones that are doing that. That's not what we want. That's not what is common in America. That's being imposed on us because they're part of a club. A club that wants an international society, an international governance over the whole world. And where does it hail from? It hails from Europe. It's not just London. It's Bavarian. Remember what the Q team showed us when they showed the pictures of May and Merkel and Macron, the sisters. Sisters? Sisters? Are you kidding me? Oh, and people got all upset. Uh, maybe we're going too fast. They didn't say they were wrong. Maybe people just couldn't accept it. They couldn't realize it. Well, we're coming of age, Field. We grew up in this. The thing that people forget, and we need to be mindful of right now, especially those that are a little bit older in this audience. When I was young, what was the defining event prior to 9-11? That was the assassination of our president, our national leader, right there in front of the world. We all watched an assassination. There was no truth told to us by the fake media. There was no truth told to us from the halls of Congress. There was no truth told to us from the White House. All we got was lies. Every word a lie. To say that there was this lone gunman who killed the president was one of the most monstrous lies in the history of this country and the history of the world. And why did they kill him? Those same secret societies ruling us from afar, ruling us from behind the curtains. And we all stood by the side of the road and watched the aftermath and participated. We have grown up in the shadow of that moment field, this audience, every last one of us. And the people who pulled that off have continued in all their evil machinations while we watched, while we came of age. They've continued to deceive us all along, putting their players in governance over us, manipulating us from foreign soil for their purposes, putting us into wars where our sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, parents were injured or killed and destroying other countries at the same time, forcing migrations of people, millions of people dead for what? So we could build their new world order on the bones of millions. If they have their way, it'll be on the bones of billions. This audience needs to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. We cannot stand idly by and accept that they get their way. If they had gotten their way, we would have not gotten President Trump. The problem for us is the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. <clears throat> President Trump is the nail that's sticking up. And so are these people in this audience field. A lot of us are sticking up. And they want to hammer us down. They'd like to destroy us. They'd like to subjugate us again to keep us under their thumb. If you're not outspoken, if you don't take a stand, if you don't make your views understood and known within your community, within your family, you don't have to be an asshole about it. You don't have to be ridiculous. But you should stand up and be counted. Down the road, you're going to wish you had if you don't. Because this revolution 
is well underway right now. And the revelations that are going to be happening throughout the remainder of this year are going to set the world on fire. And you need to be part of it. This audience needs to be part of making that change. And the other problem we have, Field, the other crisis we have, if we do, if we do it by ourselves, or if we let others do it by themselves, they're going to take all the pressure. If there's just a nail here or there sticking up, they're the ones who are taken out. They'll snipe out the ones that are a threat. When it was just one president and a few people around him, surrounded by traitors, surrounded by people that had another ideal, another perspective, they just snipe them out. The other one's stuck for cover. Mission accomplished. Doesn't go forward. They get their way. They get their war in Southeast Asia. They get their drugs from Southeast Asia. They get their drug money from Southeast Asia. They get their drugs from South America. They get their drug money from South America. And they change the course of elections. They buy off politicians. They buy off police. They put their people, promote them up through the ranks, get them up into the upper ranks of the FBI, the CIA, every agency, the news networks, Hollywood. They can buy anything, anyone, any place. And all you get is the lies, the fakes. They've been doing it for a long time. Hitler goes to Tavistock Institute in London in 1912 and practices his speech presentations. Practices how to be an orator. In London, Tavistock, yeah. Lenin, Trotsky. Stalin, they all go to Vienna, hang out together. They're in the same city. Who knows if they cross paths, but the bankers are there promoting who they promote. And suddenly they get to go out and start a whole revolution. Money shows up from the bankers in London, the New York, to take the ruling class out of, uh, of uh, Russia and start a communist revolution. They've been doing that over and over for centuries. We've been fighting this little cartel, these clans behind the scenes continuously for decades and decades and decades. And now in the current time period, what do they do? It's the CIA. It's black ops money. Truman said that uh, if he'd understood that he was creating an American Gestapo, he'd have never approved the creation of the CIA in 47 decade later, he realized what had happened, what was going to become. Where's this money come from? Where's this expertise in tech come from to make Iran the best enemy money can buy or Russia a century ago? Comes from the West. Comes from traders inside. Where'd the money come from for uh, you know, we have Tavistock over in London, but what we have here, we have Rand Corporation here looking at how to engineer society. Look at uh, where they put uh, Hilltop Air Force Base up there at the top of Laurel Canyon. And who's going there? What's the purpose of it? Well, they're doing movie stuff from nuclear detonations. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. They were training people to be stars, to be media figures to be influencers out into society. So where's Meryl Monroe? She gets a top secret security clearance to be there at Hilltop Air Force Base. What is, what's she doing there? And where does she go? She goes over to Playboy and she's a centerfold of Playboy. Where did Hugh Hefner get his money from? Now it's coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we actually were creating honeypots and we helped uh, get uh, Playboy going. He was getting money from CIA because we needed it to, you know, bring in some foreign leaders and influence them, etc. Oh, really? What about uh, uh, the influence that we have in all of these uh, movie stars? 
that were being influenced uh, through that operation at Hilltop. All of the singers that came out of uh, Laurel Canyon that caused this 60s revolution here. And the British Revolution in England. By the way, yeah, Paul did die. Paul died on 11-9. Check it out. They can make you believe anything they want. They can even make you believe that somebody that's dead isn't. They can control the way societies think. And if you start to say, no, 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 I, I, I don't believe that, they'll hammer you down. And if you resist, they'll get a bigger sledgehammer. And if you resist too much, they'll hammer you and pulverize you into nothing. If it's just a nail here and there. The only way that we win from this point forward is the same way we won the first revolution field. If the signers of the Declaration of Freedom of our independence had been the only ones that stood up, the Brits would have got every last one of them and hung them all. As it was, they got a bunch of them and they destroyed their properties and their families. Not everybody walked away. But what happened, Field, was that the rest of the Americans closed ranks, took up the cause, and said, I'm in. Me too. Yeah, you like your little Me Too movement? Well, me too. I'm in. We're not putting up with this anymore. They stood up and got counted. We all need to collectively stand up and say we're not putting up with the fake news, the fake stars. We're not going to have the fake wars anymore. Oh, they're putting babies out of incubators. We have to go bomb them. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yes, I think a boat fired a bullet somewhere in the Gulf of Tonkin, and we're going to have to go to war over that. Or the big ones, like 9-11. Yeah, so we go blast Iraq and Afghanistan to smithereens. What did they have to do with anything on 9-11? Do you understand? It was a ritual. Just like 11.54 today was a ritual moment. Another 9-11. High noon in D.C., high noon in America, high noon on planet Earth. Five minutes before the hour. 9-11 was a ritual. All those buildings around the towers. Statue of Liberty. They had it built. It's ISIS. It's their statue. They got all the, every one of the buildings around that area has a ritual meaning. You got the bull down there in Wall Street. Suddenly, miraculously shows up. A sculptor spends, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to create it. It's part of all of the ornamentation. Even the UN, who's backing this stuff? Who's putting it together? Why? For what purposes? Same people funded the UN property and gave it to the UN as funded the buildings there at 9 11, Rockefeller family. Well, we had any other Rockefellers in here? Yeah, Bill Clinton's a Rockefeller. His dad's Winthrop Rockefeller. Hidden. You got a story. It's not live, fake news. His dad was Winthrop Rockefeller, but you wouldn't elect him as a Rockefeller, so they had to give him a different name, give him a different identity so that you wouldn't uh, shut him down. Hiding in plain sight. I've told your audience this before. But we have lots of those kind of players. They're all over the place. They can create anything they want, create the illusion they're wizards. That's what they take delight in. They're wizards. Where did Michael Rockefeller go? You know him as a star. It's right there. Another Disney kid. Come on, man. Wake up. Don't buy their lie anymore. You may have been a kid like me. on the side of a street at a critical moment in our history.
history. Not understanding what the hell just happened completely. But they play on your patriotism. They play on who you are, what you want to be, what you desire to be. They play on that. They feed on it. And they're laughing at you. Because they think you're so dumb you can't get it. What you have to do now is grow up. This is about that moment where we all grow up as a nation field. And we take our responsibilities as adults. And we say, no more. We will not be your slaves anymore. And we won't buy your lies anymore. We're done with that. And if you want to try and manipulate our elections, if you want to try to manipulate who we get, if you want to snipe them out, this time it will matter. We're not letting just one family carry the weight for the whole nation. You could take out an entire family. We're not going to let you. But even if you did succeed, we're all standing here. We're all working together. Because when they took out the, that president, they may have struck one man, but they were aiming for the heart of the whole country. They were aiming for all of us. We were all in the crosshairs. We are now still in the crosshairs, collectively. And we have to decide as a matter of choice, lying in the sand, just like the founders did. We're in. We're not taking it anymore. We are all that kid standing on the side of the street, watching it on the TV, watching the replay, growing up in the shadow of their destructive moment where they intended to drive us down the cattle chute of history to their new world order. We're not doing it. We're not putting up with it. And we're going to kick you in the ass and kick you the hell out of our country and put you in jail if you think that you're going to get away with it. You're not. We're taking our country back. And we're going to support the leaders in our country who are going to go after these monsters and put them away. Promises made. Promises kept. People are going to jail. Now we have all fall. We're going to have hearings. We're going to have these people in there explaining before the whole world why they did what they did, why they felt justified to do what they did. And we'll have people protecting them. We'll have people in political office asking all sorts of stupid questions. It'll be like a scene from the Godfather movie. But in the end, you're going to see prosecutions this time. And people are going to jail. They didn't upgrade Gitmo for nothing. And all of those sealed indictments are not alarm. This is going to come to a head. This audience needs to be part of it. And we need to be able to be seen together in one spirit, in one ideal, in one way of presenting ourselves. We may have been a kid, but we're not anymore. We're standing up. And we're being counted in the spirit of that kid that all of us are and were over this last generation. Does that work for you, Field? Yes. And uh, by the way, uh, right now on our YouTube version, there's 2,200 people chatting. And over here at live stream, <clears throat> which I declare, or I consider the world's most well-informed and lethal chat room, we have a pretty big room too. 
So I think the message is getting out. And uh, I don't know if you realize, oh, by the way, a lady in England, let me just quote her. You're going to like this. A lady in England named Amanda just put this up. Well, let me think. I got yeah, my thing jumps around. Let me find what Amanda just put up. Do de do de do. It's worth waiting for, uh, if I can find it. And if I can't find it, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. She says, "Slaves, no fucking more." Now that's proper English, and I hope you embrace that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and and so I uh, I responded. I said, "Amanda Flasher, please don't say fucking again, as it fucking pisses off the fucking snowflakes." So, anyway, we, we've cleaned up our language, and I just want to let you know, in case you didn't pick up on this, because things are happening at uh, viral speed, uh, a platform down in Dallas, Texas, uh, is going to be posting our content 24-7. Uh, the platform link has been put up in our chat room twice, but it's basically called Good Dog, uh, and I will email you that link. But everything that you and I do from this point forward, and actually going backward, anything we've done in the past, going back to the Loretta Fuddy thing, uh, those items of content are going to be visible or uh, available 24-7, 365 for free. And before I go off the air today, I'll make sure that I put the uh, big dog platform. And before you, I, I know that you wouldn't do this um, one, but some people would say, oh, great, another platform. Well, not like this one. Uh, this platform is being built by somebody who used to do software for aircraft manufacturers and uh, people that are interested in security issues. And uh, I believe that ultimately he will put up all uh, 1,010 radio shows that I've done, most of which were with David Hawkins, but uh, the, I think the uh, ones that are really getting popular are the ones I'm doing with you or I'm doing with these ladies from uh, Child Protective Services that are tired of our families being destroyed by our government and our judges, uh, many of which are pedophiles, uh, no case greater than the recently uh, assisted suicide of Linda Collins Smith down in Arkansas, uh, I've been told and I believe that her husband, who is a judge, was a pedophile. So uh, pedophiles uh, have been very, very active in our Congress and Senate, and I can't clean up the entire Congress or Senate, but I've participated in get rid of, getting rid of uh, Governor Scott Walker. Let me point out that Governor Scott Walker of, um, of uh, Wisconsin shares a name with George H. Walker Bush. And I also uh, participated in get rid of, getting rid of Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan from Wisconsin, whose wife participated in 9-11. Uh, so I think we're doing good work and I think we're about ready to become much more easily accessed uh, on the internet. And so if you, we, you wish to continue, we can continue for a while if you think we've done enough damage, but what, have you, what do you think about the uh, JFK Jr. mask that I made available on this radio show ad? Well, I think that as an audience, if the audience wants to be identified, to be known between each other, to know that they're dealing with another able danger uh, cohort, they should be carrying their mask with them. If they're at a Trump rally, Maybe they can uh, find a right moment to don their masks for a minute or two. You know, the rally's end uh, with some great music, and uh, uh, maybe they can do their sing-along and use their mask at the same time. I think it's, a, it's important that we all be of the same mind. It may have been a Guy Fox mask. It may have been uh, another one in another era. But in this era, we don't need a dark figure we have a, a light figure this is this is about not allowing a single family to take the weight or individuals to take the weight of this role that we have to play in freeing, freeing our country we cannot allow people who 
come of age and who decide to make take a certain direction to free the country to then be nailed down, hammered down, Democrat or Republican. You know, Al Smith uh, was a Democrat's Democrat in the 20s and 30s. And uh, he was a Roosevelt uh, guy, supporter, you know, had his concerns, but he was a staunch Democrat. But by 1936, the Democratic Party had become so twisted and maligned from his perspective in what they were doing and who they were supporting. You know, he said that he was watching the party of Jefferson and Jackson and Cleveland uh, uh, turn into the party of, of Marx and Lenin and Stalin. I mean, this is the Democrats' Democrat. This is their cheerleader. This is the big guy. He could no longer stomach being in that situation, being counted in that crowd. And he made a very famous speech and said, I'm out. And he walked away and never came back the rest of his life because he would not be counted as a traitor to his fellow citizens. He would not participate in their lives. President Reagan started life as a Democrat himself. And he did his speech, A Time for Choosing, 1964, in the shadow of the murder of a president by Secret Handshake Club, a group of people with globalist ideals and ambitions. His time of choosing speech defined him as a leader and led the way for him to first become governor of California and later president of the United States. And he defined the differences between the way the parties thought. Today, President Kennedy could not possibly be a Democrat and say what's happened in the party over the last 30, 40 years. He would have had to have left the party. It would have been against his character, his ideals, his way of thinking. These people today, the Ocasio-Cortez, Biden crowd, have lost their way. There may be a lot of people out there in this audience that can't exactly get all excited about President Trump for whatever reason. Is he a bit caustic? Does he come across with a different uh, demeanor than you like or uh, think is right? Do you disagree on climate change or something else? All right, well, let's have a conversation. But if you're staying in the party for those reasons and ignoring the acceptance of murder of children, dismembering them in the womb. The idea that uh, pedophilia is a way of life and we should be more accepting and that state agencies should be allowed to take children away because the parents are too religious in their thinking or have a gun in the house. Well, you're in the wrong party. You need to think again. I'm not throwing stones at you. I'm just asking you to consider again where you're at. There's lots of people walking away. Al Smith walked away. Reagan walked away. Others have walked away. If you need to make some changes, you have different viewpoints, let's have a conversation. Let's try to get to the right answer together. And let's try to get the lies out of our discussions and conversations. Those people that are telling us lies and then we're supposed to take action based on these lies. That's not what we're going to do. And these next many months are about exposing the lies that have been perpetrated on us and establishing what the true facts are, both in manipulating who we got for leaders and how they got their way over us to pass laws that really didn't jive with the the majority of the country, uh, you know, they, they have dead ideas because they have dead people voting for them. So they're voting in the stuff that their constituency uh, likes. Those that hate God love death. So they got dead voters. We have to reach out, bring more
more people into the fray on our side. It's a numbers game at this point in time. And help people to have reasons for making the choice which side they're on. And in this moment, promises made, promises kept. We're going to put some people away that deserve to be taken off the streets, that deserve to be taken out of places of authority because of their criminal activity, their treasonous activity. We're going to shut those things down so that we can have an honest conversation about what we need to do as a country and where we're going. Not a manipulated, lying, deceitful conversation based on a bunch of lies that have been perpetrated into our society, into our governance, into our media, that twist the way we think and don't allow us to actually have a normal, natural thought of our own. That's what this time is about. And we're going to help our neighbors because we're going to take some of those influencers out of their positions of authority in the media, out of their positions of influence in Hollywood, out of their positions of voting authority in Congress. And we're going to get other people in there that will actually have a fair, honest conversation. And we're going to get to the right answers. Come on. I may not agree with everything that everybody says around me. But we can have an honest conversation. If all you have are lies by deceivers, how can you have an honest conversation? Let's get to the true facts of the matter and get on with it. These people want their breakaway society. They want us as their slaves. They serve Satan. It's that simple. We cannot stomach we cannot put up with, we cannot avert our eyes and allow that it's okay for organizations to exist where it's the cannibal club and we eat human flesh. People offer their bodies for us and we cook it up. Now that exists in California. You didn't know that? It's a true story. Go ahead and Google it. They haven't taken that side down. They take every other conservative side down, but they'll keep the cannibal club side up. Are you kidding me? And they're serious. That's that's not a LARP. That's not kidding. Did you see? Did you see what happened when uh, we had the witness from the Nexium trial yesterday? There was uh, some uh, texts about it, and this particular witness took three polygraphs and the polygraphist gave a uh, uh, after you know board made a, a legal uh, statement finding that this person was speaking the truth and what did the person testify to what were they talking about at this next scene trial that just ended in the media yesterday and by the way what media was covering it 13 days ago did you see it on any of the big channels, any of the big media channels? They wouldn't have to like never happen. It's a big deal. Why? Because it's going to go after media people and Hollywood people before it's all over. But this witness says that at this recruiting meeting that took place uh, down in the Bahamas in the shadow just around the corner from Epstein Island, at this recruiting meeting, they were shown videos of snuff films. They were being recruited into the Nexium cult with snuff films. Snuff films are where you kill somebody. Now, was it fate? Who knows? But is that something that gets you all excited sexually, that you want to be part of the Nexium Club because you're watching somebody be killed on video? Oh, it's just a fake. Well, who was there? Oliphantus was there. Oh, of pizza fame, one of the 50 most influential people in Washington, D.C. The person whose emails and, and other information is part of the WikiLeaks drop that led to the defeat of Hillary Clinton. Uh, along with Podesta and his emails talking about spirit cooking that simulates cannibalism.
capitalism, amongst other things. And these are the people that you're going to have for your leaders. These are the people that it's okay to have around you, to have as entertainers in the White House, Katy Perry. Are you kidding me? Wake the fuck up. What are you thinking? Seriously. If you're a Democrat and you're backing this, it's okay. Well, it's just a lifestyle. God will not look favorably on that. And neither will the rest of us citizens because we're adults and we're not putting up with it in our society. In a prison. The inmates would not put up with an inmate like that. They killed Dahmer. They wouldn't put up with it in a prison. And I'm supposed to put up with it in my neighborhood, in my city, in my state, in my country? Are you kidding me? Wake the fuck up. Get a brain in your head. If you're asleep... Now is the time to come out of the days. There's plenty of people here to help you. Come on. Seriously. This is the time to stand up and be counted as an American. To think like an honest to goodness classic American. Not this fake American that they tried to foist on us. A classic, real American is never out of date in any generation. Every generation has to decide to come of age. We're coming of age now, Field, in the shadow of all these events, all the fake news, all the fake gun shootings. All the fake false flags, all the fake wars. They've been faking us. The devil is the father of deception. And he's taking delight. And those people that are serving them, serving him in our midst, have to be rooted out so we can get on with our life and get to the truth. And find ways to live together and work together. Preserve the planet. Preserve the way of life. Preserve something of a future for our children and our children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But beyond that, what kind of an inheritance? Is it freedom? Is it a life? Or is it slavery? We will fight to be free. That was the way the people thought that signed that document in 1776. That's the way the people thought that supported them and went out to the Bridge of Concord and said, Hell no! You have got to go! Get off our sword! People that are overlording us from afar have got to go. And the leaders that they've foisted upon us unlawfully with all their little schemes and maneuvers. Hello, Obama. Born on August 4th? Seriously? Oh, my goodness. The 216th day of the year. Gosh. Six times six times six. What is that? And by the way, when is the Queen Mother's birthday? And how many times have you visited the Peace Arch Hospital in B.C.? Who is behind that scam? <coughs> how many intelligence agencies were involved in that scam? We have got to get these liars, these deceivers out of our midst. And they're lying, deceiving Minions. Zuckerberg came up with Facebook because he's such a business genius. Now, oh, fine. He's just a puppet. He's just a pawn for other people for their money to 
manipulate it. Look at George Soros. Everybody in this audience, listen right now. You think that George Soros, Dr. Evil, just happened because George Soros is such a genius? Are you kidding me? George Soros is an asshole and an idiot. You hear me, George? Another George out there, huh? Well, a false George. All that money he got, where'd he get it? Oh, he was shorting the British pound and made a bunch of money shorting the British pound. Well, who who probably? We had a pretty good idea what was going to happen with the pound based on how the economy was going there in Britain and what they were doing and how they were leveraging it. You suppose any of the political leaders in MI5 and 6 and the bankers in the city of London had any clue years in advance what they were going to do to the pound? Of course they did. It was a scam. They wanted to Rake up some money, you put it in this guy's hand over here, now you do what we want you to do. You go to these places, you put the money in this group, you put the money in that group. It's a money laundering operation. He's just the figurehead. By the way, who was the most frequent visitor in the first term of the Obama administration to the White House who wasn't actually a government official in the United States government, who was the most frequent visitor? George fucking Soros, and I'll say fucking again, because he's fucking everybody. Why? Because he's a British agent. Don't you get that? When they had that little scam, and Barack Obama has the bust of Churchill sent back to England from the White House. Oh, well, he and English just don't get along. What a scam, man. Did you buy that? Seriously? And then they have their British agent Searles in there, giving them dictating, you know, here's what we want you to do, here's where we want this to go, here's what we got going on, and what, you, what can I do to help you right now today? Are you kidding me? Seriously. And then you, if you're a Democrat, are okay with that? Look at the things that Soros backs. Even backing drugs. Look, I know this is a sensitive subject for a lot of the listeners. I'll lose a lot of people when I say this. The marijuana, I understand. The medicinal, medical stuff and all that. Okay? I understand it for some of our soldiers and other things. I get it. But you know what? They don't call it dope for nothing. And on the whole, while there's, like any medicine, like anything, a lot of times it's got a good purpose. It can also be abused. It can be damaging. And if Soros was back in it, it wasn't to do good for the country. He wants to dumb us down. He wants to collectively, our, our, our youth, our young people, to delete themselves, to dilute themselves, and then delete themselves. To get to some point of desperation, to not have their wits about them. Why? They want to dumb down herd. They want us not to be sharp, have our wits about us, enjoying life, building, creating, doing. Just chewing out. Serves their purposes. Are you going to be a sheep for them? Are you going to go along with it because that's what they want you to do? That's the devil's way. That's this good and evil. That's this moment that we're in. You've got a choice, heaven or hell. It's, just, it's that simple, really. Because the way that these Democrats that are in office right now are trying to leave the country, that's the way to hell. Groping Joe and his crowd, are you kidding me? Skull and bones and their crowd? Those who hate God love death? Ooh, let's do a secret handshake. Let's do it in the dark. Let's let's do our ceremonies in a coffin. Let's have skulls and displays in our little room for our secret handshake club. Those are the people you want running your country? That lying, deceiving piece of shit carry? Lobbying against the interests of the United States in Iran? Against our president? 
where do these people get all this money? Iran got all these billions from Obama. The best enemy money can buy. It happens over and over and over. Where do we find the technology going into North Korea from? Who's over there in North Korea giving all this computer technology away? Where did they get the printing presses to print those dollars, by the way? Those incredibly perfect American dollars they were shipping out of there. Where did they get the supplies to do that? The silk. Who's funding these operations against us, creating the best enemy money can buy? Shipping technology and truck plants to Russia. Building up the infrastructure for a war in Germany. Creating the context for war in the Mideast. Three wars. It'll take three wars. For us to create our global new world order. Under our Lord Lucifer, Satan. Where'd the First World War start? Lusitania. Lusitania, hello? Where's the money behind the UN? Lucis Trust? Lucifer's Trust creating the UN? Where'd the Trinity Towers come from? Oh, Nelson Rockefeller. He helped with the money for the UN building and buying the grounds for it on a slaughterhouse property. Oh, it had been sanctified by slaughter of animals. It was a sacrificial site. What's the deal with 9-11? The towers built by Rockefeller, like the Titanic, designed to come down. Always, from the beginning, we are watching these people playing out their machinations against us. But it's high noon in America. And the sun is starting to set on these criminals. And what you're about to see over the remainder of this year is those people coming off the street for good cause. And this audience needs to be ready to give a solid account to their neighbors, to their friends, to the other citizens. Slaves no more. Back to you, Phil. Did you just say back to me? Yes. Have I ever once corrected you, Juan? Uh, I can't think of any, but I probably needed it. <laughs> well, you need one right now. It's not, it's not slaves no more. It's fucking slaves no fucking more. Okay? Aye, aye, sir. Okay. I want to give you a giant compliment that you cannot anticipate. According to Eager Beaver, um... We're at a record number of chatters at YouTube, uh, YouTube Live, and this is not a normal show day, so to set a record on a non-show day, it's simply uh, a testament, testimony to how much people like hearing you talk, because the only way this notice could have gotten around, I did put up a radio show, but uh, a lot of the people at Able Danger would see that, but nobody else would. So this is all word of mouth. And uh, Chief C uh, says, slaves no fucking more. And I'd like to say, well, so does Jen K. Uh, we've got masks coming from all over the place, and they're all in our chat room. Uh, and I think that mask idea could turn into a global uh, revolution. And when you were talking about revolution, I was thinking about John Lennon and how he was murdered in October of 1980 because he was set to expose the Tavistock Institute for uh, creating the Beatles so that they could be used to foist mind games upon the American youth and to make America youth less moral. Uh, and that worked. I mean, America's youth from, say, what America's youth was like in 1961 when Del Shannon sang uh, Hats Off to Larry, it went like this. Once I had a pretty girl, her name, it doesn't matter. She ran away with another guy. Now he won't even look at her. Then he does that uh, Del Shannon stuff. Listen, from them to 68 or 69, uh, the youth in this country, roughly my age, 
were encouraged to be irresponsible breeders and male, uh, the males were encouraged to take advantage of the ladies with absolutely no responsibility. And that touches me in a variety of ways, one of which is offensive to God. Right here where I'm sitting right now, within 150 feet where I'm sitting, there is a woman who's expecting a child that was, uh, well, the person that impregnated her also uh, raped her six-year-old daughter. And you know what? That may have worked for a long time, but according to Johnny Cash, you can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. But pretty soon, those of us who are fucking slaves, no fucking more, are going to say, sooner or later, God will cut you down. Over to you, Juan. Well, you know, the thing is, Field, they, they try to enslave us, not just in our minds, not just in our ideals, uh, to twist the way we think they try to, to twist our taste what we want um you know you mentioned john lennon uh paul mccartney by some accounts was very upset when they did the uh uh slaughtered baby album cover that was then pulled back and they had their uh, uh jimmy savile issue over there and apparently he was aware of some of the antics of Jimmy Savile with the kids and couldn't stomach it. If you remember, and so there's questions about the, the mechanism of death for Paul McCartney and why he had to be taken up before he was going to say something. One of the things that uh, is also very disturbing, for example, uh, going back to Tavistock engineering the Beatles uh, and and the way that they were presented to the world. Um, on the uh, album cover, uh, Sgt. Pepper's cover, they have Aleister Crowley there. Aleister Crowley was one of these key people, the leader of the band, uh, part of the whole Tavistock theme, and uh, uh, influence also over into Hollywood. For those people that think that that's okay and that's cool, and he just, you know, he just had a different way of approaching the world with his religion and everything else, he worships Satan, he worships Lucifer. By his own account, by his own words, he claims that uh, uh, essentially he was sacrificing kids almost half the days of the year, sacrificing them, killing them, dead that he loved killing little boys. He also loved raping small children. He considered raping them in the asshole uh, uh, as a rite of Osiris and opening the mind. And so that was the eye of Osiris. And this is somebody that you can even tolerate in your house with an album cover in your house. This, this satanic, demonic, uh, uh, contact point. One of the people that I enjoy, Linda McAllister, she had albums, she had uh, memorabilia from her uh, grandfather that was a Masonic uh, emblem, some things. When she realized what these meant, and she was a CNN uh person worked in there in, uh, in CNN and a number of the other networks. Uh, she came of age and realized what these things meant, what these were emblems of. She saw them as touch points to the dark side that the demonic world could attach themselves to and then have right into her home, into her life. And she took them all out into her yard and burned them. She didn't give them away. She didn't put them in the garbage to survive in some landfill that would be found a thousand years from now. She destroyed them utterly. So they couldn't have any damage to the next person. And they couldn't have a way of getting into her life. That's what the president did. President Trump, when he got to the presidency, when they got to the White House, they had to have Satan kicked out 
had to have a cleansing ceremony. Satan was evicted from the White House before millennia would go in there. Thank goodness. Thank God in heaven for people with that kind of conviction in this day and this hour. That's the problem. We've had leaders that would look the other way, that would avert their eyes, that would countenance evil in our institutions as a nation. And we've had our fellow citizens that would countenance it. This is a moment about good and evil. And the revelations that are coming, that will come late in the year and next year, about just how far gone many of these people are and what they've accepted and what they'll do, that's when you're going to have to be able to dig deep and decide, can you accept a tinge of evil? What's your threshold? What's your line in the sand? It's not just about slavery, but it's also about heaven and hell as an individual and as a nation. And I say that in a very serious, solemn way because we can't be tried about it. This is, you know, eternal decisions, really, because it's also about your kids and your grandkids. What kind of a world are you going to hand them? You're going to hand them a world where, well, the best nutrients, the best food is human flesh. It's got nutrients no other food has. Are you serious? Think again. Wake the fuck up. Think clearly. Get out of the days. Have a drink of water. Think about this. As a nation, we cannot countenance that kind of behavior. Those kind of people in our midst. That is a gateway for evil into our society, into our government. Before it's all over, we got a long road ahead of us. I don't think you can actually clean up Washington, D.C. I don't think you can fix it. It's already fixed. President Trump's going to have to invite all of his contractor buddies. They're going to have to put a fence around D.C., three layers deep. You're going to have to pamphlet the city. Anybody that wants out, we got metal detectors, and you're going to get strip searched. You're not getting out with any of the evidence. Anybody who wants to stay, you're an enemy combatant. We're going to flood the city and wash it out. We're going to divert the Potomac. We're going to watch where the water comes out of those slimy holes. I don't care if they're 200 miles away. And then, after we flushed it clean about three times, because we're not taking any chances with any of our guys, then we're going in, we're going door to door, and we're going to clean that place out, and we're not going to occupy it again. We're just going to leave it fenced up as a spectacle to the world of the insanity of these groups that have tried to manipulate us. And we're going back to right thinking, godly thinking, sound thinking. Humans, not these monsters that have taken over our country and our way of life. I hope all of your listeners decide to be counted. I hope that they'll find a way to close ranks, recognize each other in the spirit of that kid. We all are. We all choose to remember and be standing on the side of a street as our father, president, figure, friend, fellow American rolled by. We won't take it anymore. 
we're not your slaves anymore and you're not picking any one of us out of the crowd and sniping just one or two here and there because they're the nail that sticks up we're all sticking up for each other and for our country i'm the nail sticking up take a look at this face hey does your id facial recognition scanner recognize this <laughs> yeah we're all that kid how do you feel? Okay, well, I think we've done a fair job. But do you mind if I read a, a brief prayer about being on the side of the road? Excuse me, a brief poem, and then pr maybe perhaps I could do a prayer before you leave. All right. Here comes the poem. It's the house by the side of the road. But keep in mind, if we are all by the side of the road with our JFK Jr. mask, we can think of the thoughts expressed in this poem, and I'll try to read as quickly yet as clearly as I can. There are hermit souls that live withdrawn in the peace of their self-content. There are souls like stars that dwell apart in a fellowless firmament. There are pioneer souls that blaze their paths where highways never ran. But let me live by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Let me live in a house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. The men who are as good and the men who are bad, as good and as bad as I. I would not sit in the scorner's seat or hurl the cynic's ban. Let me live in the house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I know there are Brooklyn. Let me just see if I got this right. No, no, I, I, was, I skipped one. Here it comes. I see from my house by the side of the road, by the side of the highway of life, the men who press with the ardor of hope, the men who are faint with the strife. But I turn not away from their smiles nor their tears. Both parts are an, of an infinite plan. Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I know there are brook gladden meadows ahead and mountains of worrisome height that the road passes on through the long afternoon and stretches away to the night. But, I, but still I rejoice when the travelers rejoice and I weep with the strangers that moan, nor live in my house by the side of the road like a man who dwells alone. Let me live in my house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. They are good, they are bad, they are weak, they are strong, wise, foolish, so am I. Then why should I sit in the scorner's seat or hurl the cynic's ban? Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I would encourage all of our listeners who like the uh, theme of that poem. Uh, the name of the poem is The House by the Side of the Road. Uh, the name of the poet is Sam Walter Foss. And I'm going to say a prayer right now spontaneously. I have no idea what I'm going to say, but here it comes. Dear Heavenly Father, let this be perhaps a starting place of a great global group that wishes to be a friend to man, uh, a group that wishes not to judge, not, not necessarily to teach or demand, but um, an army globally that is willing to accept people for who they are and reach out to their needs and to help them heal their wounds uh, because because the way the world has been for four or five hundred years has wounded all of us. There's not one person listening to my voice right now who can't relate to some loss in their family fabric or some loss in their corporate life or some loss in their personal fortune. Um, the people that have been running this world, uh, especially here in the United States from 1606 to Inauguration Day of 2017, uh, those people, Lord, are your enemies. And somewhere in Hebrews, it talks about what happens to the enemies of God. And I'm just one of your feeble soldiers, Lord. I'm not strong and I'm not smart, but I am strong enough and smart enough to make sure that these people who are trying to destroy me and to destroy us, to destroy marriages, to destroy families, and to destroy countries will be held accountable and I want them to be very, very nervous now. And if they prefer not to be nervous, I wish to let them know that if they get on their knees in a dark place all alone and cry out to God, that you will hear them and you will heal their wounds. But you will also expect them not to reoffend. I say this in total confidence and in total service to my Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, there's a prayer for you. I hope it works. And before you go, Juan, I want to remind you that tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, I will be doing my first ever, no, second ever show with a guy named Big Dog. And in, in any interview that I've ever participated in as the guy being interviewed, I've never been interviewed more effectively than the one interview that I did with Big Dog. And I believe that the interview, which was lost, it was, uh, uh, I was in the United Kingdom in March and I did the interview from the United Kingdom. And Denise and I were told that the interview was lost and it may have been, uh, but it may have been so lethal that somebody else wanted to jump in and take credit for it. I'll, that's, that's a possibility. So let's say goodbye for now. And uh, this is a spontaneous thought I had about 34 minutes ago. Um, are you going to be available at any point between now and the 4th of July for another uh, show? I probably will field. Um, you know, I, I doubt these people are going to, you know, uh, go away easily. Uh, they, <laughs> you know, they believe in a centralized government. They believe in, uh, you know, the full power of centralized government. And uh, that doesn't mean behind the president. They mean in spite of the president. Um, you know, uh, so I'm going to have to be available to, you know, carry this on. I'm not going away, uh, as uh, you aren't either. Neither is this audience. You know, uh, Bill Clinton, he praised Carol quickly with his, uh, you know, fragile help, whatever book, uh, when uh, Bill Clinton became president. And, uh, you know, Quigley was praising the secret powers behind the scene, the families who had worked for generations to create this new world order. Uh, those people aren't going away. They're not going away just because of words. We're going to have to root them out. We're going to have to arrest them. They're going to have to go from the inside out. They're going to have to be exposed with their fake leaders and their fake wars and their fake heroes. They're going to have to be exposed with their fake stars and their fake media talking heads and all the mischief they've been involved in. All their fake money that they foist on us through lies to take over our country and the making of our own money, the way that we function. Uh, the fake leaders of industry and their lying taxes and the supposed benefits and the things that they're going to give us for free that they've stolen from others. And from uh, each of us, you know, the, the scripture I've mentioned in your show before, every man oppressed by his neighbor, <laughs> that isn't central government and federal taxes. I don't know what is. So, so yes, I'll be around. I'll be available. Um, you know, the, the one thing I'd also mention uh, in, in leaving. Hang on, just a, somebody wants to say goodbye to you. Uh, before you go, but you carry on your thought, and I'll let you know who wants to say goodbye. He's standing by right now. We have, uh, you know, people that have looked at this electronic frontier, this spy in every aspect of our lives, this intrusion, this government by remote control, and the AIs, all the things that they want to foist upon us to hold us down to chain us, to enslave us. Uh, John Perry Barlow, wonderful guy, outstanding guy, saw ahead, saw the future, saw it from the inside out as a uh, three-letter agency, yes. saw it in the uh, entertainment industry. He was an important guy, and he saw the future clearly warned us about what was coming we only have a moment to catch this before we fall off the cliff in that prayer you just prayed field my addition to that prayer is please father god in heaven protect our president and his family and the families of those people who have taken a stand have drawn a line in the sand, penned their name to paper, 
and have decided to go up against the monsters so we can get our country back, not just for ourselves, but for our kids and our grandkids to leave a legacy of good. Amen. Well, amen to you too. And uh, somebody is standing by on Skype, and he wants to say goodbye to you before you go. So, Chance, over to you. Blessings, Phil. Uh, Juan, yes, this is Chance. Um, I hope you remember, we, we've met several times, uh, including uh, one restaurant in Pasadena. Yes, of course. How are you, sir? Good, good. Uh, thank you for the wonderful information that you pass on uh, to the listeners in this show. It's truly amazing and very informative. It's heartfelt. Amen to that. And also, well, I hope to... I hope to, you know, meet up with you soon, um, Juan, and uh, I have some information that uh, I'd like to pass on to you um, that you can use in whatever purpose that might be, but uh, I, we can also chat on the phone at, at a later date as well. Of course, and, you know, I'm on speed dial. I'm glad to, glad to talk anytime, and, and uh, um, you know, this is, uh, this is a pivotal moment, so communication is everything. Thing. That's that's part of the the whole point. Uh, they want us not to be communicating. They want us not to be seen. Uh, if we are seen. They want us to all dance and walk the way they want us to walk. Uh, I say, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> facial recognition. Yeah, you recognize this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we're all safe. Yeah, pick us out of the crowd. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, listen, um, great, great to hear your voice, and I look yeah. forward to having conversations soon. So until that time, have a wonderful day. All right, super, and, and look forward to talking soon, Chance. All right, be blessed. Okay, Juan and Chance, um, I'm going to keep Chance on and say goodbye to Juan because i got to get home. I have a daughter named Myla that was born two weeks ago. I haven't seen it. She'll be home soon. Wonderful. Okay. God bless you both. Chance, stay with me. Uh, Juan, I'll welcome you back anytime between now and uh, President Trump's big announcement on the 4th of July. Wonderful. Okay. Look forward to it. God bless Thanks you, Juan. Us. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, Chance, over to you. And if you don't mind, could we make this fairly brief? Because I've got to do a really good show tonight with Big Dog in Dallas. I will. I will make it brief. As a matter of fact, my connection isn't great right now because uh, we're having some weather here in Florida, I mean, in uh, Texas. So first of all, I just want to say to your listeners um, who are already familiar with American Survival Wholesale and Simple Clean Foods, uh, if there's anyone out there uh, that needs a Bible, we have King James Bibles free of charge that we will ship to you uh, just by you sending a simple email to Simply Clean Foods. That's plural at chef.net. If you need a Bible, I believe that it's the greatest gift that one person can give to another.